can't begin to describe it. What's he want from us? To block the subpoenas. But he knows we can't once those things go out. And what I could promise him is no more surprises out of our shop. Is this that cocksucker McNulty? Not this time. He's been gone from that unit a year. My oh, best guess right, is Lester Freeman. Freeman. Lester's got a hell of a game. Well, we need to sit on the motherfucker. All that unit needs, Commissioner, is proper supervision. Perlman's going to take a hit, too. Hey, the state of Maryland just lost another cooperating witness, so I just found a lot of fucking overtime. This case went from who gives a fuck drug murder to straight up red ball. Uh, Don't put in the 24 that the guy was a witness. Trust me, we do not want to kick shit in an election year. Work the case, take the OT, but bury the witness angle till we know for sure. Rule of thumb around here, Mr. Prisbluski, never assume. Yeah. Explain what you want them to do, have them do it, then explain again. With time and patience, they'll get it. Mrs. Shapiro. It's easier to keep track of lab work if we all use the same heading. Upper right hand corner above the first blue line, name, date, and class number. In that order? What are the odds mm -hmm. that Cuddy's ex girlfriend works there? Because Cuddy's ex girlfriend worked at a school. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's that school and they're going to run into each other. Yeah. Sorry, Richard. Can you hold a moment? Your buddy from the FOP, as he says, is important. Hey, Valchek. I'm a little busy losing an election here. Oh my God, is he going to use you the. Remember about six months ago, you told me to keep an eye for any witnesses getting clipped? You remember that? Who's better than me, Tommy? It's got to be about that. Else what else could it be about? It's got to be about that, unless it's about the guy getting shot. You live near Duquan Weems, correct? Dookie? Sure. I oh. want you to take this to his house. Them clothes won't stay clean long. Make sure you deliver them just to Duquan. Not any of the adults in the house, just Duquan. Want me to do it tonight? That would be great. And Crystal, thanks for today. You're welcome, Miss Donnelly. Ah. <clears throat> Look at Bubbles. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this young man has to be resident for school. Does he attend here? Uh, he should. What I mean is, uh, what grade were you in last year, dear? Uh, he he kind of lost his way some time ago. He's living with me now. And you are his uncle. I'm his uncle. He looks beat, in man. Office. Look at Bubbles cleaned up good. Oh shit! He saw Przybyski. Now I get why the school's coming in. All these kids go there. I was I thought he was in like another freaking district or something. He's working at the school that all these kids are supposed to be going to. And now Bubbles got a kid going there. All starting to make sense now. Now Naaman's here. Yo, man, you finished? Got another two minutes, man. Fuck that. I got a fight coming up. You can come back later, all right? The man said he got one more round, all right? Man, step aside, youngin'. Nah, man. Bag him up for four rounds and I only did three. Fuck that, man. Yo, what the fuck you trying to prove, huh? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. What's going on, boy? I got a fight started tonight. Take it in the ring. You can come in here and work out, use the equipment. But nobody gets in that ring unless they're being trained. And you want to be trained? I've been watching you hit that bag. Natural right hand, where you throw it, and where you land. It. Now, if I was to train you, we have to start with floor work. Cause see, if you don't know how to move, you ain't got no business being in that ring. So what you think? I train you myself, personally. Say yes, Michael. Nah. Ah. Uh. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. Eventually, he'll go there. Now, is this girl just helping out, or is she, like, related to Dookie or something? Bringing Dookie of his clothes? Is Got Dookie it. Dookie here? What's that? That's what it's going on, right? I take it to him. Oh, my God. They're going to, like, snap. Hey, Crystal. Miss Donnelly said to give you these. Okay, I'll be right down. They'll, like, sell them or steal them on them or something. Downtown development comes at the expense of our 
city's neighborhood. Well, that's just unfair and uh, divisive. For them to suggest that my administration uh, has not been responsive, well, Economic development cannot be a band-aid. It is a long-term process that requires commitment to retraining our workforce. And as I said before, this can only be successful in a city where people feel safe. So before we can even begin to think about luring new industries to Baltimore, we need to think about how we can make these neighborhoods and this city safe once again. Mr. Karkeri may think it's in his interest to exploit people's fears. He's been doing it throughout this campaign. I'm offended by it personally. But the, the fact is that violent crime is down citywide. And our police department is working hard to keep it that way and will continue to do so under my administration. Councilman Carchetti, you have two minutes to respond. Does anyone in this room really believe that crime is down in Baltimore? Call me a liar, Tommy. Gentlemen, please, no personal interactions. Councilman Carchetti. Can the mayor honestly tell the people of Rosemont of Bel Air Edison of Highland Town at Cherry Hill. There's less drug dealing, less violence. Any statistics coming from the police department cannot be trusted because under this mayor, the police are more concerned with protecting Clarence Royce politically than fighting crime. There's no leadership and morale has never been lower. I'll change that. It's business as usual down at City Hall. And as oh, a result, he actually did go with one of the girls. What do I mean by business as usual? What do I mean by wanton indifference? Well, last night in West Baltimore, on Landville Street, another citizen was shot and killed. It was the guy that got shot. The was a key witness in a drug case that had yet to come to The one Norris got. This man had agreed to testify in two weeks' time in that case. The police should have been protecting him. They were not, and he was murdered. Oh, shit. And why? Prime time, man. Now, I have no doubt that in a moment or two, Clarence Royce will accuse me of exploiting this man's death for my own political purpose, but the truth is, a year ago, I wrote the mayor a letter. I have copies for anyone who wants one. I begged him to spend the money and make witness protection a priority. He ignored me. I even teamed up with our legislative leaders, Delegate Watkins and others, to get matching funds for witness protection approved in Annapolis. And incredibly, those matching funds were never claimed by this administration. Now, to mention this now may be exploitive. I don't know. I only know it's true. And on such truths, I ask the voters of our city to consider a change. So, please, please, hold your applause until after the round of questions is over. Mayor Royce? No more surprises, yes, huh? I can say that this city places the highest priority on protecting those citizens who come forward to testify, and we will continue to do so. Mr. Carchetti uh, states that he wrote a letter. They all look very concerned. unsure. I'm sure that he did. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy enough to write letters when all you have to do is write letters. But when you are required to run a city, on limited resources and balance priorities, well then, well then you understand that writing letters will not solve the problem. Oh no. Yeah, she got them all closed for school. He's basically a spoiled brat as far as that crew goes. And he has a big mouth and it doesn't look like he can back it up. Every time someone's conflicted with him, he's slapped like a girl, and then he like act like a, like he just hugged the dude. He's a, not a good fighter. Hold on. You think my son ain't gonna grow up that school looking like himself? Meanwhile, Dookie and them have like crackhead families that don't even let them bathe. He's got video games. He's got new clothes. He's the spoiled one of the group. I guess they're taking care of it because it's Wee Bay's kid.
now I understand why they focus so much around all the young kids in the first episode. It was also titled Boys of Summer. This show doesn't just like do things for the sake of doing it. There's got to be a big reason. I thought the reason was going to be because Randy knew that Lex got killed by Felicia. But we also got the names of a lot of other kids in the first episode. I'm like, why would they even bother letting us know the names? They definitely pointed out Dookie. Then they pointed out Naaman. Naaman was said a lot of times. I, they made Naaman look like the ringleader of the group. Even though Michael seems like the tougher kid, he's a little more quiet. And Naaman's got a big mouth. And now it makes sense why. Because in the beginning of this, you find out it's Weebay's kid. So of course he's going to have a big mouth. Weebay has a big mouth. But Naaman can also talk a lot of shit because he's got the reputation of his father to fall back on. That's why Bodie and all of them let him do it kind of what he wants. The mother said they, they said he hasn't been showing up to work. But they didn't do anything about it. It's because they have respect for Weebay. But Weebay is definitely one of the type of fathers that's going to be like, dude, start doing your part. Because there are certain fathers, even if you are like riding on the reputation, they want you to fulfill that reputation of theirs. They don't want you to just have the reputation of being like a spoiled brat rich kid that can't hold his own. And not for nothing, it doesn't look like Naaman can fight. Twice now, he's gotten to altercations where it was like amongst friends, but both times he got his ass kicked. Then when they did the pee balloons, he splashed it on himself and then ran like a bitch. So Naaman is definitely not the tough one of the group. He's just the big mouth and pretends he runs shit. Michael is clearly the tough one of the group. He is probably the leader because when Naaman got loud with him, he's like, dude, I'll kick your ass. Like, shut the fuck up. So... I wonder if Michael's the son of someone we know. Probably not, unless they're like making it some kind of elaborate surprise. But we only got a season and a half left of this show. So I don't think they're going to go too much into that. But who knows? It might be. I think Michael is definitely the toughest guy in that gym, except for Cuddy. And is probably going to let Cuddy train him. It looks like Cuddy is getting... Every mother in town coming to see him, even girls that aren't mothers of the kids, just mothers of people that want to watch him. So he has a whole roster of women he could date now. We saw at the end there, he was hooking up with one of them. Then the two big political things was Freeman got all the subpoenas, guilt tripped Perlman into giving up Clay. Clay freaked out and had one of the best moments of the show with his shit. The longest drawn out shit I've ever heard in my life. And then gave us a little encore when he bitched out Royce and gave us a little like shit. Clay has jumped the ranks just solely based on how great a character he is. As a person, he is deplorable and vile and I dislike him very much. But as a character, he has been around long enough where I'm learning to like him just based on his off of his personality. Even though he is all about money and crooked as shit, he is funny to watch, I guess, at this point. We didn't see any McNulty, but we did also see in episode one, we saw the secretary giving Royce a look. And in this one, we see why, because she is giving him BJs. I don't know how much further that's going, but I'm assuming there's more to it than just that. I don't know. I forget if Royce is married and stuff like that, but clearly a scandal So Herc's just got to keep his mouth shut. Then Valchek goes to Karketi and it made it look like, I'm like, oh my God, is he going to tell Karketi about the blowjob? But he also said something to do with the cops. It ends up being the guy that got shot that Norris went and checked out ends up being a witness. And now Karketi's going to use it against him. Now it did make Royce look stupid when he was on TV, but is something like that really going to make that big of an impact? Like, or or is everyone going to go, oh my God, You didn't give funds to witness protection and one guy died. I don't think that would happen because so much is wrong in Baltimore right now. Is it really going to make that big of an uproar about one guy and witness protection? I'm not saying that it's good or bad. I'm just saying with all the shits going on, Hamsterdam happened, all this shit happened. Granted, a year's gone by. They said so. McNulty settled down with Beatty and Cuddy's gym is booming. A year has gone by, but would that really matter that much? Is this going to be the big what the fuck in this season? Like season two had the stained glass window. Season three had Marlo, who was just like, I don't know, in my mind, just doing whatever the fuck he wanted when everyone could have just put an end to him to begin with. I dig Marlo now and I dig his whole crew. I like them all better than probably Avon and his crew, even though Avon and his crew are now in jail besides Bodie. I will always love Bodie, but... The majority of them are in jail now, so Marlo's crew is obviously the only crew to love, but I do really like all them. I feel like in season four, is this going to be the thing where it's like, is this going to literally spin the election on its ass? 
I hope not because I think, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think something as silly as one guy dying in witness protection right before the election's about to happen, I just feel like that wouldn't have that big of an impact. You guys let me know what you think. Comments down below, like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.